Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's uh, Sunday, uh, October 31st, 2021. I'm Jeff, and I need to bless the- Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Well, welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of a Determined Length, episode number 623, and happy Halloween! Ooh. 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 <laughs> like my background, I got a bunch of pumpkins behind me. Oh, right. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Sorry. They what can't see. To... Can. Right. I'm like, what am I supposed to be seeing? Because I can't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm realizing that, yeah, you, you probably have it. We can't see it, um, and we, you know, in either case. Anyway. Oh, how cute. Yeah. We got some pumpkins in the background. Jack-o'-lanterns. So you got a spooky background, but we don't. Yeah. Because okay. you didn't put a spoopy background for yourself. So that's not my problem. Uh, of course. Does that say? Does what say? Three can be scary. <laughs> Dude is busy trying to read the little <laughs> graphic stuff. Sorry, I'm just so abused. Okay. Though. Keep calm and eat more. Okay. Okay. Are, are you done reading our overlay? I'm done reading. Yeah. Okay. I was, oh, I'm going to stop sharing. So I'm sorry. I didn't clear that. Why? You can still share it anyways. Yeah. By all means, share. <laughs> so I didn't realize I should have shared the graphic ahead of time. So, Oh, actually. Well, you know, I, you know, I, I, I could do that because I still need to share some stuff. <laughs> need to see it. Anyways. Uh, so, uh, Jeff, what kind of a show are we doing? Uh, we're doing this. So, uh, because of, uh, certain reasons, uh, and for some reason, my employer being like, we need to hire any person we could possibly get. Um, we've been a little bit busy this past couple of months trying to train people and get them onto the floor. Now that we're starting to wind down, we're starting a slightly new process. Instead of just sending them from training onto the floor, we're putting them into what was referred to as nesting. Mm-hmm nesting but okay. we only really were, had planned for one person to be the the trainer for nesting mm-hmm. but then we're currently at 12 13 people in nesting so we're split them up so uh somebody had to fill in that separate group and guess who got that job? Me. I'm going to say you. <laughs> who has two thumbs and is really tired this morning. <laughs> so yeah. uh, instead yeah. of my normal Monday through Friday, I've been working uh, Friday through Tuesday. Uh, 
off Wednesdays and Thursdays. Temporarily until we can start graduating people. And once we get down to more than a manageable number for one person, then Waz will take care of everybody. And then I can go back to my Monday through Friday, hopefully in time for my vacation in mid-November. Two weeks. That would be really nice. It's already been approved. So no matter what, I will not be here that week. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, in addition, um, I'm my main character in Final Fantasy XIV, I've gotten all my jobs to 80. Uh, and Yay. during my vacation, I will be starting my journey through the next expansion of Final Fantasy XIV, which means I have two more jobs that will be added, which start at 70, so I need to get them to 80 and in order to continue my upward trend so and they will have 30 jobs total that's including the crafters and the gatherers uh so that's an achievement and that's pretty much it otherwise it's been pretty drab well, I'm happy to hear that uh, they're not being crazy with the nesting thing. And by that, I mean, coming from a telecom background in my majority of my work career, I'm used to nesting where they would really push it. And they'd be like, oh, you get nesting for a dozen to two dozen people at once. Like, so a, a ratio is always a good thing when it's lower, like one to six, one to eight, maybe one to ten. Um, cause even in training, like I've done, uh, upwards of 30 to 40 at once. Oh, Jesus Christ. In nesting yeah. or training? Training. But as trainers, we would also do nesting. And mm -hmm. honestly, nesting is easier than training in some ways. Um, especially if you're the person that trained them in my experience in the work that mm -hmm. I did, if you trained them and then you went to nesting and you stayed with them through nesting, I found it easier to do nesting because... I knew I was going to be with you for nesting and I was like, Oh hell no. Like I am not going to be running around answering 30 hands or 24 hands or whatever. <laughs> like, like I'm like, I don't, I don't have time for that. Like, so need to make sure that like, they're like, yes, there will be lots of like questions and stuff in the very, very beginning. And we would always prepare and make sure we had extra floor help, that kind of stuff. And granted mm. this was, you know, pre COVID when everybody was, one place yeah, but i was about to say but oh but gary this is all remote yes it does make things very interesting because uh in my yeah. part-time job where i still work in that field uh part-time it is uh, very interesting i don't i even though i helped build material developed it for at home now it is the norm and so I'm very intrigued to how this works with supervisors and managers at home. Like, I'm just so used to it in person, like a, a brick and mortar environment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and it's not mm -hmm. that I can't understand it. I just operationally, I'm like, how do you, everything is chat, like no <laughs> camera. Anyways, oh, so, yeah. Uh, fortunately, yeah. we've got built-in systems for video chat. So, Oh, good. And so I can be like sharing screens, being like, here's why you did it wrong. <laughs> and here's what you can do to prove it. The only problem yeah. is that it's also people being attentive to their chats. I can't like walk over and talk to them and says, make that edit, damn it. Right, right. Mm. Well, and it goes both ways. Um, I just as a side note, I had my annual review recently, and interestingly, the director reached out to me on our new interactive platform anyways it's a it's the actual company i work for they have a whole separate thing where we like we have a feed like a timeline it's very social media and you could like things and do praise and anyways and i got a personal message of feedback and they wanted me to do a uh, feedback on my boss oh uh, so that was kind of awkward because in my feedback about my boss, I ended up comparing them to other bosses of which I've had about six since I've been working from home, <laughs> this company. Oh. Well, because I work part-time in the evening and they kept rotating me around like with different people. Cause they, I think they finally have a supervisor for Eves. Okay. 
so it, it made it challenging. But anyways, I was like doing some reflective like, well, this supervisor did this, this and this. And I appreciated that this supervisor doesn't quite do that. But I also feel like they're lacking in certain skills, but it may be because we're primarily at home and they haven't completed their management training, blah, 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 whatever. Like, so, mm, mm, mm. but my point is, is to Jeff's comment about the, the chat thing. Like if I reach out for help or have a question, I would appreciate you paying attention to give me a response in a timely fashion. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which that's when I'm sitting there. Yeah, I may be playing homescapes, but I hear my ding. I look at my chat, answer question. Sure, I would like them to ask me the questions for one thing, and two, I, when I say do the edit, I want them to do the edit. Right. So it's it's kind of trying to get them into good habits, which I'm right. not sure if they're they're doing, and it's tough when you're at home because you can get so many distractions especially when one of our agents is easily distracted right <laughs> what what mm-hmm. huh? right squirrel mm-hmm. penis oh. what mm-hmm. <laughs> i smelled it <laughs> anyways so i but I, I think we have I have one and a half agents, which I, I'm ready to just kick to the floor. I say mm-hmm. kick to the floor, but it, that's me being kind of jokey about it. It's like she's ready right. to go. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're ready to move on or graduate to the mm-hmm. good to the next thing, which is you know. I'm happy to hear that like it seems like you have a little bit of a flexible program. I'm used to it much more like everybody moves at the same time and I'm like uh, <laughs> like that's there is one person that's gonna be starting with me tomorrow uh... That's all you have to say. yeah <laughs> <laughs> I mean it, that's that's true. <laughs> I think we understand. Totally got that. Anyways, but that's my October. Okay. Damon? Uh, let's see. Um, you better explain this. Enjoying the swing? <laughs> yeah. Um, meaning I'm enjoying, like, the swing of, like, work and home life and what have you. Okay. Um, go trying to balance back and forth between the two. Okay, if that makes sense. I was about same to ask where did you get it? How much was thing it? In a similar like for a while now, my my work my life has pretty much been very similar, very the same. Because I'm working from home, I'm staying at home. I get off work, I chill, I do some stuff sometimes around the house. I go to bed, I get up the next day repeat you know okay in the weekends i do stuff like sometimes it's gaming sometimes it's um usually it's gaming actually um more than anything else nowadays i have chorus rehearsals we're still rehearsing um separately so every other week i have chorus rehearsal um so i'm enjoying the 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 swing the natural the continual like pendulum going back and forth between what we're doing so, but um, obviously, October is is uh, my birthday month. Um, Yay! For those happy belated birthday, right? Belated, as opposed to tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's the thirty first. Yeah. It's Halloween. Of yeah. that candy for everybody um, drops by. Nobody yeah. ever drops by, so I get to eat it yeah. all. And yeah. we're all dressed appropriately in our podcaster costumes. Duh. Oh. Why do you think I have these right. these jack o' lanterns behind me? Uh. Oh. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. Um. This is gonna be awkward to talk about because we're technically in the future, but we're also anyway. Um. <laughs> Don't break so, the fourth wall. 
too, too late, bitch. Late. <laughs> too late. Um, uh, I went to visit AJ. Um, um, and how was for, that? It was great. <laughs> it's always nice to see him and and um, see that area of the country. I really love it. It's so pretty. Um, we what you do? Ate, we probably ate some food. <laughs> ate a lot of good food. That's typically what we do. Um, and um, we uh, went on some fun adventures. Um, Theater Cub doesn't know how to improv very well. No, I do. I, I can when wow. I, I could do improv in the present. <laughs> Timey wimey breaks him. Yeah, timey wimey shit breaks me. Anyway, but no, it, it was it. Yeah, it, it's good time. Food had some went to the restaurants, did some stuff, went out. I think that's the plan. Um, we're kind of, we, we have been talking about it, like literally as we were speaking, um, you know, last week, anywho, I'm just going to stop like that shit. Um, (laughs) um, but yeah, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I took my annual week plus off for my birthday um, took the time off, enjoy going to enjoy some well needed just time away from D swing. While I like it and it's okay, um, it is nice to have some time away from it, especially when in these post or current COVID times, everything literally happens here at the house, you know. Um, but I do have some other good news. Um, things are finally fixed. I mean, there's stuff that's breaking again, but the things are finally fixed. So the roof, um, at least the one on uh, on the front porch, is fixed. And as of the twenty something, what was that Wednesday? Yeah, the twentieth. Um, the porch ceiling got put up. So everything is done on the front of the house finally finally (laughs) welcome to being a homeowner you have no No idea idea. because we have one other thing that has literally just happened that we're going to have to deal with that we weren't expecting so yeah 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 and you know, yeah, because it's the thing. And it was funny. <laughs> it's really funny to kind of segue a little bit. Uh, we were just watching Property Brothers on um, um, home HGTV, and it's always interesting watching that now as a homeowner, as opposed to not being a homeowner. Because some of the things that they that happen and the 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 problems that they you know that come about because of the fact that they're um, you know tearing stuff out and tearing things away like walls are opening and you're finding all the damage like in one episode um, they found the old um, like stove air vent mm-hmm. and there was a nest probably from some squirrels or something in there. And they pull it out and it's stinking and um, stinking. And then, like, they had to stop it because there are bees. So, like, no, no, thank you. I don't, I don't want that idea in my house, in my mind, because stuff going on in house that you can't see because you can't see it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. And then, like, this last <laughs> one we were just watching. They tore down the um uh they were touring walls and apparently there had been like awful termite damage and moisture and stuff and like they were breaking support post like they could pull them out with their hands. No, that is not <laughs> that is not a good thing to see as a homeowner. 
Mm-mm. But yeah. Happy birthday to me. Yay. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are you now the same age as the answer to the ultimate question? Yes, I am. Is the best year of your life then? Because you we'll are see. the answer. We shall see. If 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 no one under if you don't understand what that joke is, read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's me. Gary? He's muted. Thanks. <laughs> um, I was just... <laughs> October um, has ramped up and getting busier, which is not what I thought was going to happen. Um, and mostly I'm talking about work, uh, just mm. the way things have been going. Um, the state annual reporting was due at the beginning of the month. The HIV walk was just at the end of September. Uh, so, and like that ate up, I'm looking at a calendar on my wall. So that ate up like the first week of the month already. And then, uh, you know, world AIDS day is coming up on December 1st and I'm trying to do the program planning for that. And, um, my coworker who does sort of does my similar job, um, but over on the STI side, uh, mm. they have taken another position at the health department. Oh, so I'm happy for them. I'm also not happy with them, uh, <laughs> because mm. that means that the rest of us that deal with the clinic and, and the kind of work. Um, puts more uh, kind of work stuff for, uh, on us to be able to do those things. So that has become a, a challenge. Um, and one of my coworkers was out on vacation for a week, so that we had a delay till the second week of the two-week notice before we could actually like rally around and have a conversation with management, like, what are we doing? What are the priorities? How do we get things covered? And then my boss sends an email on the day before the last day for my coworker to the state to ask them for clarity on priority stuff. So, yeah. Um, so I spent the end of this month feeling very stressed. <laughs> mm. Just with those kind of things. And I'm about to go on vacation for my birthday. So, yay. yay. Yeah, not, not right away, but um, soon. So uh, the original plan that I had this year kind of didn't work out, and that's okay. Um, I wanted to go to the Rocky, or not the Rocky Mountains, the Smoky Mountains down uh, in Tennessee, the whole Gatlinburg kind of you know region, mm-hmm. and was possibly going to go to Dollywood. I was just going to do all these things. And then um, I had a whole cadre, a group of people that were going to go, and we were excited, and we were going to rent a cabin. And then things started happening for people. And it kind of didn't work out. Mm. And then, like, the group declined in size. <laughs> oh. oh. And I was, I was like, um, okay, let me. So I actually, technically, I canceled the first cabin, got a second one that was smaller. And then, like, still ended up canceling that one and getting a refund both times. Just because I was like, this isn't going to work for just wow, a couple wow. people. And, well, because it was just going to be a couple of us and... Yeah, I had all these okay. dreams, these grand, you know, ideas, and it just wasn't coming together. Um, I had a dream. Yeah. So instead, I'm just going to go uh, hang with friends at a friend's house uh, for a couple of days to get away. Um, a staycation, a pseudo staycation is yeah. always a good thing. Yeah, it'll be nice. Um, and a change the pace, a change the scenery is always good. Agreed. So, and then already uh, kind of making some plans for next year, um, possibly doing a a run activity with with, with significant travel, not like local. So um, Mm. that'll be uh, an interesting thing to to see how that comes about. So, yeah. Oh, and uh, I'll talk about it now. Uh, 
since we've gotten to this point, <clears throat> this hasn't exactly been the most pleasant month. Uh, for those of you that know about like um, the fact that I've since inception been involved with Drench Fur as the bear run, uh -huh. we uh, had a very difficult process this year in trying to deal with like planning the event uh, to catch everyone up really quickly. In 2020, we decided at the very beginning of March, right as the pandemic was beginning to postpone it for a year because of COVID. Mm -hmm. So we did that. And then in January of this year, in 2021, we decided to move it again and postpone it out to next year, 2022, because at that time, we really didn't have vaccinations um, available. <clears throat> they were just starting to come out to the public. And there was that whole like priority. Every state had their own like who who gets them at what mm -hmm. time kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So consequently, we um, decided to move it out to next year. And then in April, uh, we were informed unexpectedly that the ownership was in debt and that they, uh, the loan they had with the bank decided to take them to court uh, for back due multiple, uh, multiples, multiples, very, very big numbers. We'll just say that. Um, and so they went into what's called receivership where the court assigned someone to manage the property in the meantime and to decide what to do with it. And so that threw everything in a tizzy. Uh, we had to wait till the new management company finally got a hold of us. And what are we doing? And blah, blah, blah. And the difficulty was is that we didn't technically get a written contract for next year in 2022. And we didn't know what was happening with the deposits. Uh, and then <laughs> we were informed in this month uh, by the new management company that the current owner, which I believe is the bank, has decided to close the property. Oh, Yes. And this is the water park or no, this is the hotel, hotel. The, host, okay. the host facility, the host facility that has uh, several thousands of our dollars <laughs> yeah. tied, tied up in payments. We made way back for the 2020 event that wow. they, we didn't have that they were going to honor. And now I don't know. We don't, we as a group don't know if we're getting a refund check of our deposits or not. Um, so, uh, it was actually very stressful this month and, and difficult and heartbreaking. Uh, the board slash committee made the decision to cancel the event for next year. Mm -hmm. Just, I wasn't happy about it, um, but that's why we're a collective group that make the decision um, because I've always kind of been like, you know, I don't know if it's like Moby Dick and the white whale. I was just like, no matter what, we'll make it happen. And, mm -hmm. you know, understandably the consensus was kind of like why are we trying to fight this like why are we trying so hard to to make this happen if it's going to be difficult because i like i we've did research moving to a new hotel um you know we did get an offer of exclusivity at a different property it was cost prohibitive um mm. they wanted a, a very high amount for the nightly rate um mm. and it's because it's the the company that owns the water park it's a conglomerate. Uh, they own a lot of places, and they always sell out their host their hotels at that time of year because mm, it's spring mm, break. Mm. So, long story short, um, we made the decision to cancel for next year, and we're going to refund everybody uh, in the coming month of November. How much we refund is based on whether or not we get our money back from the yeah. management slash ownership of the property that's closing. Um, oh. And uh, since we haven't heard anything, and they're about to close. Uh, you know, here on the first of November, it's not, it's not looking yeah. exciting and, and enjoyable as I would hope. Um, so people have been so far decent in the, you know, about us telling them, mm -hmm. um, some people have been, you know, nice and said, this is a shitty thing. And so sorry, you're dealing with this. Thank you for, you know, being clear. Some other people, um, prior to this big announcement and, and the whole background, um, were getting really pissy and antsy with us cause they were like, you know blah 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 and this that and you people like, mm -hmm. you know i can't believe you canceled it or whatever twice and it's like yeah this is not I something wish, that we wanted to easily yeah do i i i, I wish overall and i'm going to say this like this, you know i wish people would realize this was not no one expected anything that happened over the past year or two right period like nothing this is we I know that word has been said so many times, but this was unprecedented. It was right. something that no one expected, no one knew anything, no one knew the full scope. And it sucks. And people have had to no one knows 
are new how to really handle this fully. I mean, the government technically did, but they threw it away. But um, um, no business, no event, no run, no, you know, especially like like smaller scale events knew what to do with this stuff. So right. you got every everything is trying to make a decision based on what they know and making the best decision for everyone. Right. I mean, and that's really what happened in this month. We were like, okay, do we still try to have the event? So we decided to research it and we did find that the company that manages and owns the water park and several hotels was willing to work with us. Um, we couldn't get a duplicate of what we've done in the past because they were already booked with another convention, but mm -hmm. we could get a smaller property that was, that was recently renovated with a decent size atrium slash pool hot tub area um, that was comparable, um, but it didn't have meeting spaces ballroom mm -hmm. um yeah. so like a lot of things would be modified but like yeah. we were willing to a certain point and what it really came down to was we don't know if we're getting the refund back and honestly um i'll be honest with you guys like the cost of the hotel room was going to be roughly 200 plus a month or a night oh god Ooh, jesus right and you know we we briefly discussed it and that was the the key sticking point was everybody was like we just we won't do that to our to our wow. attendees like we've like we've come close to that you know when you add taxes and everything um but you're getting like a suite mm -hmm. not just a standard room mm -hmm. um so yeah it was it was just yeah. one of those like we can't do that to the people that have been coming to this event and expect them to be okay with that like to have mm -hmm. such a price jump yeah um, agreed so and, and, yeah you know we decided not to and so the the plan is Really, what we were talking about is like making a new chapter with a clean slate, planning the event for 2023. But like, uh, we don't know what the future holds with the old property. Um, I think one of two things will happen. It will either get sold um, mm -hmm. and someone will take over and potentially like continue on with the, the in-process renovations that were going on and do something with it. Or um, the more unfortunate thing, I think, for our region is that an, it will get sold and someone will just demolish it. Um, and the because the estate that it sits on, the land, is probably far more valuable than the rest of the stuff, which is really crappy to say. But um, right. sometimes it's, true. it's in a tourist area. It's near like a major traffic hub. Theoretically, they could build a whole new hotel there. I mean, I think the property has good bones. It just it breaks mm. my heart because it's the only real property in the area that has the number of rooms with the size atrium pool with a huge ballroom, two meeting rooms, on-site restaurant bar, outdoor courtyard, mm. plenty of parking. Yeah. Um, like it just it had a lot of amenities and features that we all really liked about it. Um, and it was uh, it was only like three stories, technically four, but like it was much more flat and laid out as opposed to tall. So it wasn't a, a high rise. Or high whatever. rise, yeah. So oh. and it's from an older era before uh, heads and beds, as we say in the industry, you know, where they were just focusing on the overnight stay. This was more of a destination-ish kind of um, mm -hmm. property. So that's why it had so, such nice uh, stuff to it. So mm -hmm. that happened this month as well. And that was not exactly an enjoyable thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm I'm optimistic once this year ends and we get into 2022, then we can, uh, we're planning on doing a survey to our most recent attendees to be like, okay, what are the things that you really liked about the event that you would prefer? Cause that's going to help us plan for the following year. Like what kind of a property do we need mm -hmm. for amenities? You know, do they want the basics or do they want what we grew into in 15 years, which was a much more robust, um, you know, kind of event that had a lot of different various aspects. So and utilization of space that was the that was the big thing mm -hmm. so um yeah so we'll we'll see kind of how that goes <laughs> yeah <laughs> best Wait. of luck to y'all thanks <laughs> it's okay yeah i i mean yeah. i i've moved through that uh spent a couple of days in a like just a i don't want to say in a foul mood i mean it was actually kind of sad and mm -hmm. it was just one of these things that i was like not willing to give up like i just really kept thinking it was going to work out but yeah mm -hmm. just have to 
make some serious decisions and, you know, and, and the key piece is I think a lot of us were feeling like we were at the mercy of other things. And this really turned into, we need to take some control over this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that. All right. Well, and with that, I think it's time for this. Gary, what's been going on over in the Facebooks? Uh, over in Facebook, we would like to thank the following people for liking uh, our page on there. Andrew Edwards, Blue McDavid, Thomas McDonough, Con Cons. So thank you very much. We also had a comment slash post. Uh, Edward, uh, Mr. Angelini Cook, that uh, has been on for our Landscape of Relationships series. He uh, just recently did another episode with us. And he said, here is the image we were discussing. So uh, I believe he, this is the image he referenced on the show that he said gave him this whole idea um, about this uh, episode where we called creating your party. Um, it says, don't go alone, build your party. And then it's an octagon, uh, kind of like a stop sign shape, but it shows the person like in the center, who's basically, you know, the client or the patient. And then going around it, it says therapist, doctor, religion, friends, community, coworkers, partner, family. So what it was trying to say is like, all of these things can be good support, uh, stuff for you to to achieve what you need to achieve and you know to rely on when you need it so thanks. be alice and find mm -hmm. your brady bunch ed <laughs> yeah mr damon how are things what did we get uh, for feedback over in the youtube so we have a new subscriber on youtube that's um enrique Bal already welcome hi yes um, and then we got a couple of comments on COL 620, which was our let's talk about food this autumn time. Um, it was, it says, Damon, what do you prefer in your apple? Um, this is from Owen. Sorry. Ooh, that, that didn't come out first. Um, <laughs> okay. What do you prefer in your apple? And me, I prefer Gary. He's the apple of my eye. Also, Gary should get some cranberries and pecans, a nice pie crust, and some flour and cinnamon for topping. Maybe we throw some crystallized ginger in there, too. Okay. Hang on. So I mean, we had an entire episode about this. I know, but the, the reason why I'm laughing is I'm like, this is some Sweetie Todd shit. <laughs> Bake you in a pie. Mm, right. I'm like... If it, like that's the way I was taking it. I don't think that's what Owen meant, but uh, it's, it's <laughs> and amusing to me. Anyways, thanks. Yes. I thought he wanted to top you with all. Uh, we already did a CEOL episode about sex and food. That's what I was talking about. You can just <laughs> go back and listen to that to hear how I feel about that subject. Uncle Pete was our guest. Call him to say. Mm -hmm. It was a great episode. Moving on. <laughs> so on um, COL 621, um, which was the Creating Your Party episode, um, Din Din Lucy replied, good topic, interesting discussion, relationship dynamics and interactions in, of LGBTQIA people are so peculiar. We are so different compared to the heteros. Uh, P.S. Thank you, Ed. Um, kind of. Kind of what? Say, like you kind of agree? We are so different compared to the heteros. I I, oh. I kind of agree with that, but I kind of don't. Um, I think a lot of ways relationships are very um, complex, no matter what your sexuality is. Um, and having these different dynamics and interactions, I think the difference between like LGBTQ and and um, um, hetero. Um, relationships is uh, we tend to be more for lack of a better phrase open and freer with our thoughts and ideas behind it um we're not repressed by a, a lot of the bad you know a lot of history and, and religion and what have you in regards to our relationships as um heterosexual relationships are 
Uh, okay, that's fair. I, I guess what I was going to say is um, I think that we are distinctly different because I think we are much more open mm -hmm. uh, communication wise. Not that we're we've got it better, but I think we just are much more attuned to probably being authentic uh, to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like and so we're like people. Some people might say we're freer. Uh, so I, I think that we are much more engaged in our own identity and how we see okay. ourselves. Um, Fair. Be, because of our upbringing, because of society, I think because we do feel marginalized, um, I think those are, those are key aspects to what can, you know, really um, be important, you know, uh, specific to us compared to others. But I, I mean, I do agree with you, Damon, to a point that, yeah. you know, that I, I think that there's, a lot of similarities, you know, I will admit I'm not versed in the dynamics and, you know, of, well, uh, opposite gender relationships. Yeah. That may be, I don't know. I don't, well, I, I really don't, I don't know. Well, okay. Let me, I won't say it. Uh, I say, I will, I think, <laughs> um, well, it might be to have a different perspective again, you know, a lot of our perspective, um, you know, the three of us, Ed, et cetera, is slanted more towards the LGBTQ side of things. But Ed, I, if I'm incorrect, if correct me if I'm wrong, is a general overall sex therapist. Therefore, he he is probably he probably could potentially have clients of heterosexual like sexuality, heterosexuality, and 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 other those type of relationships as well. Right. So. Well, maybe that's something we can talk to Ed about in the future, yeah. like for another maybe. episode is um, that what he, what he has seen as a therapist and the, any distinctions or all the similarities, whichever. Yeah, you can talk mm -hmm. about it. What about, Jeff, so what about on Twitter? I just read the one in the middle. Um <laughs> Over on Twitter, we got a plethora of well, three of uh, tweets from Owen. I'm going to do this in chronological order because I okay. Uh, first off, he thought uh, on October 30, he said thoughts on today's episode of Cubs Out Loud from the from the toilet. It's a picture <laughs> of a toilet or emoji of a toilet. Man, I must say, Gary was looking nice today. Also, they all have some interesting points about the things. Yes, well done. Thank you for sharing your thoughts from the toilet. <laughs> then on October 15th, he says, it says, anybody remember when on Cubs Out Loud, Jeff started talking about apples and Damien was saying how much he hated applesauce and then Gary was talking about how he has too many apples and was just thinking about rubbing against his beard. Good times. <laughs> and last but not least, G A R L I C S A L T E D B O O T Y H O L E. That comes out loud. <laughs> and if you're not sure where I spelled that, it was garlic salted booty hole. And yes, we have a clip video on our YouTube channel called garlic salted booty hole i named it that because i had to share it with everybody for the record <laughs> this has to be one of the funniest things in recent col history probably in a couple of years that just tickles me to no yeah. end yeah and it's just it's so silly, it's so silly. <laughs> me reading no one's tweets yeah. just just the fact that that has I don't know. It's sort of become a thing. Or, and, or garlic and, salted booty hole. And, and the best part by far is in this episode, I think for the patrons, they got to hear David's other half <laughs> rip on the screen. No, I don't think they did. I don't think I had hit oh. record cord soon enough for that. And I said, damn it, I hadn't started recording yet. Oh. Well, suffice it to say, anybody who understands garlic salted booty hole, that is now a thing, and David's other half is aware of it. <laughs>
Damon will yeah. never live that down. Thank you, Jeff, for that. For that, you know, and for me not realizing what it was. Oh no! And then and 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 then listening to it with Jim in the room. No, no, I listened to it first on my own, and then I shared it with him. So I actually no, I don't blame you, Jeff. I blame me because were, were, were you at were you at work? No, I was at I was I was I was it was after work okay. for me, okay. and then. <laughs> Jim came home. No, Jim, not came home, but Jim came downstairs, and I think I was laughing about it. <laughs> or he saw it on the screen as I was looking at my um, my history on YouTube. Either way, it was there, and I wanted to share it with him, and I ended up sharing it with him. And now I won't, probably for a while, live it down. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so tickled anyways <laughs> I'm glad you're tickled You can blame well, Gary I mean, for it it'll, because... it'll have a little tinkle to it So what <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the only thing is This is more of Gary's fault Than it is Damon's fault Okay I will take responsibility for my Brain creating this <laughs> But Damon has responsibility because of the topic during the show and us having the, like, <laughs> afterward. Uh, after it was after show, garlic salt. You just don't know. Mm -hmm. Garlic salt. You don't know. I love it. Yeah, still love it. We're actually out. I may be telling. Uh, I've already. Jim has already mentioned getting some, but he mentioned it in. The uh, I mean, I need a refresh. That did I? Yeah. Did I just recently make sure I added that to my Instacart? Jeff, uh, Jim, Jim, I don't think you can hear me, but you need to get two bottles, one for the bedroom, one for the kitchen. He already said that. <laughs> <laughs> totally did that joke. <laughs> totally did it. Now <laughs> for the world to have heard that joke as yeah. well. Thanks. Thanks, so, Gary. <laughs> so, Gary, tell us about the shows that we had. <laughs> this month which included some of the ones we just referenced uh in uh the month of october here we had uh, had cml 619 which was the what's going on for the month of september uh and then we did a 620 was the let's talk about food it's autumn time where we're talking about our uh favorite seasonal foods um <laughs> and then uh hence this whole like silly meme thing that we are trying to make happen i guess and then um we had a COL 621, Landscape of Relationships, or the LOR uh, series that we've been doing uh, now with Ed. And we did the Creating Your Party. Um, and then uh, Damon and I, we did 622, Let's Talk About Sex Series, and we told horror stories. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, uh, that, was, that was an adventure. And um, so for the patrons... See, this is the reason you need to become a patron. Uh, for the patrons, they get me reading aloud most of a of a little story article that we found on the web about the one establishment that was my horror story. Yeah. Um, and it was a it was uh as we used to say back in the day, a real page turner. Um mm -hmm. It took us on a journey, David and I. It sure did. <laughs> and the thing is, it was completely on the fly. We found the article because I couldn't remember the name of the of the location. And then I found it and did not know that in roughly, we think, November to December of 2018, this uh, article got posted. Or it's not really an article. It's a like a kind of a story. Almost. Story. Yeah. Um, by this gentleman. And uh, so anyways. I read most of it aloud, but uh, we're also including the link for the patrons. Uh, yeah, so it was a uh, it was very interesting. <laughs> and now we're here at six twenty three, and it's the end of October. It's Halloween. Yeah, yeah, it's Halloween, and I think this is a great time to talk about Dick. All right, that's enough. All right, all right. All right. Jeff gave us one this time. Uh, I've been giving one pretty much uh, every week or month for the past couple of months, so that's something. 
Mine is, I call Pants Off, Dance Off. For Fatty Boom Lalati. Uh, at Sky High Fly Guy R.I. He says, not quite a full moon tonight in, in, in Atlanta, but definitely a Pants Off, Dance Off on the hotel balcony. <laughs> Sorry, I was there's there's been a, a little gnat that has been flying around all podcast and it finally landed and now it's dead. Um so tell me, yeah, would you enjoy to have any pants off dance off with this gentleman? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think I actually I think I I think I actually follow him on um on the Twitters. I believe I do as well, although strangely, I didn't have this tweet in my memory bank recently. Like, I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, how did I miss this one? Anyways. Um, yeah. yeah, he's a big boy uh, and very proud of his body and likes showing it off and likes having sex. So that's mm -hmm. that, that's kind of his, tw that's his Twitter. I don't know what to tell you. Like, that's pretty much his profile. I mean, that's his Twitter. Yep. But, yeah. Um Sorry, I got distracted by the image. Anyways. Oh, there he, he does give you a picture of his full moon in Atlanta. <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah. Wait, what? What is <laughs> sorry. It's timely, it was the previous one. <laughs> sorry, I just got tagged in a tweet. A retweet something anyways i was very confused i was like wait what? what's going on anyways uh, oh huh no that won't work i mean well i don't know what <laughs> he's in dc he will he was in he he was in dc the same time that i was in dc you're you're trying to do the time to me thing again, i'm too. trying to do yeah. that's not working anyway <laughs> Moving on, Damon. <laughs> Fucking A. Um, so this one I titled Jocktober, and it is by um, Fur D Pup, our Fur D Man. Um, and it's a, uh, he's got a nice um, early um build and a nice yellow and black jock on. Mm -hmm. Kind of matches his hood. Um, very much so. Yeah. It's very kinda, color coordinated. Yeah, I like the shirt. Everything kind of works. I, I like in his description, uh, those who do not flee will be cuddled. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I have been following him for a little while. He is actually connected to um, another friend of mine on Twitter who I am friends with on Facebook who I met through Bruiser, actually. Hmm. Um, you want to like make that long connection? Small world. Um, I know. Um, but um, I think I think and uh, I have to ask. I think they're in a triad of some kind um, with another guy. Are there in a a play relationship or alpha um, pup kind of relationship? Pack. That's the word I'm looking for. Pack. God bless it. <sighs> um, together. So they're nice, and they they um, they're all. I mean. He's just a handsome. He's a he's a handsome man, um, and he's a very he's a very handsome pup too. So, yeah, I think there's um, one of his pictures. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of the three of them. I think. Yeah, they have yeah. sort of matching hoods. The the colors yeah. are matching, but the colors are somewhat similar. Yeah. Um. Yeah, but there's a picture of um, he. One of his most recent posts, you actually get to see like his face unhooded. Um, yeah, and he's 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 
he is a handsome man. Like, He's adorable. Yeah, I would I would gladly get a want a hug and I really want to touch that beard because that beard is beautiful. Um he lets to say he in his thing where it says those who do not flee will be cuddled and definitely mm-hmm. not fleeing. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Gary. Uh, oh, sorry. I was distracted by the ah, look Twitter at you. page. Uh, yeah. So I wanted to give some recognition to uh, my sweetness here. Uh, Vinny um, Vince, who's been on the podcast before. Uh, he has a couple of different profiles, but this is um, pup underscore Divion. Uh, so, uh, hopefully we will have, uh, a proper diagnosis and stuff cause he, um, needs to be on the men, but, um, he, um, <laughs> wrote day two, still feeling cute. Um, he doesn't really post many pictures of himself cause he has a tendency to just like reshare, uh, things. Mm-hmm. And his Twitter is a lot of like, uh, two dimensional sort of anime sort of porn, Mm-hmm. And final, fin- mostly Final Fantasy, like game, like kind of circles of stuff. Um, so yeah, it's a rare picture of of, of a Divion. Uh, so yeah, he said might be contagious. May call a specialist about this. Posting pic for medical debate. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. That's his handsome mug. That is his handsome mug. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hi, Vanny. Yes, always. I said it in the um, uh, on reply to one of your pictures. It's always good. It's good to see your face. Because I know I, I don't think I've seen it in a while. Actually, I know I haven't seen it in a while. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. He's adorbs. He's yeah, adorbs. He's, he's a big sweetheart. Love him dearly. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yay. Moving on into the links. Uh Gary, what do you got? <laughs> uh so Paramount Plus has a series uh, called Star Trek Lower Decks. It's a two-dimensional um animated series. If you like Star Trek slash love Star Trek, I cannot recommend enough that you watch the series season one, season two. There's gonna be a season three. It is Probably one of the best tongue in cheek, intentionally parody, like uh, fan serving <laughs> IP things that ever has existed. It's it is very funny. I was about to say hysterical. I don't know if I go quite that far, but and what I love is that uh, I can't remember his full name, Michael, the the producer. He put so many Easter eggs in the episodes that people who consider themselves deep Star Trek fans, like are losing their shit over the craziness of the things that he puts in the episodes. Um, so yeah. And like this season two got into sexiness. Uh, Oh my, which is really kind of like crazy because like one of the more sort of bearish brutish officers is completely naked on screen. Um, but you know, tastefully, uh, you don't see anything, but oh my god, it was <laughs> the show. Ah. It's it's like I don't know how to explain it. It's kind of like if they made a Star Trek version of American Dad. Mm. Um or The Simpsons or something, like like it's all in the Star Trek universe and it's canon, theoretically, but uh it takes place in the TNG era. So it's during the the time of the Enterprise with Picard and that whole crew, um, uh, but it's 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 after uh, when Riker has gotten his own ship. Anyways, you, you really need to watch it. It's it's quite quite nice. quite funny. And um, yeah. so and the end of season two was a cliffhanger. Uh, <sighs> actually, shockingly. Which, I mean, it's just, I don't want to say just, it is an animated series, so there's a part of it that, you know, maybe you don't take very seriously. But, um, yeah, like, quite surprisingly, there's a shocking ending to the last episode of the season. I mean, and they already knew they were going to have a season three, so it's quite obvious that, like, you know, 
this is meant to lead into the next season, but mm-hmm. it was uh, surprisingly dramatic. So yeah, but uh, yeah, there's a couple of episodes <laughs> about like um, people getting their freak on and stuff like that. And um, nice. they, uh, I mean, there are things about the Star Trek universe I don't even know about. Um, <laughs> if you understand this reference and you haven't seen the show, you need to see it for this. They actually show what's it called? Citation Ops. Um, I'm just gonna say uh, horny whales. <laughs> and kind of leave it at that. Um, uh, I don't know. Oh no. <laughs> so. So Jim and I are actually um, just started watching it. Um, I want to say within the last week or so, a couple of weeks or so. Okay. Um, we're slowly going through it because I'm, we're just, we're just so. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll watch a couple of episodes at a time. It is funny. It is enjoyable. We're only on, we're still in the first season. Okay. Uh, but I'm, I'm looking forward to getting through it. I will say this. It gets wilder and crazier the longer they go i think it's because the first season was such a success i think um cbs paramount um uh, roddenberry all of them have given him i don't want to say carte blanche like a hundred percent leeway but they're letting him go wild and it's that's where it gets even crazier and funnier like and just Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i love the main characters they're fun Boimler is like the Will Wheaton like kind of character that's kind of nerdy um has fun purple hair uh but like you know has these big dreams about moving up the ranks and you know becoming mm-hmm. you know a, a you know an officer on the bridge and eventually a captain and like so they're always like kind of playing with that with him and and uh you know Tandy is is fun as an Orion and you know uh yeah, and Jackson, all the rest of them. Anyways, so I I just really enjoy it, even though I think I'm much more versed in the Star Wars uh, IP than Star Trek. But I still appreciate like the the silliness and all that about it. I don't know. I just it tickles me. So I well, it's good to hear. Because I am okay. I'm glad Star Trek is still going. Yeah, because we need Star Trek in our life. Yeah. <laughs> And Star Wars, but that's another matter altogether. Anyways, you know what? I think that's it. Oh, that's the end of October. Happy Halloween! Happy, Happy Halloween. Halloween! Send all your spooky greetings to us. You can do that in plenty of ways by do going over to our uh, website at cubsoutloud.com and comment on the blog. Or shoot us an email at cubsoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361 C. We'll talk. That's 361 265 8255. You can follow us on Facebook, t- uh, Twitter, and YouTube at Cubs Out Loud in the appropriate place of the URL, or even send it directly through our entourage chat at tinyurl.com slash telegram dash col. If you want to know when we're planning on recording these shows live, you can take a look at our Google Calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. You can get various coutrements, such as a Cubs Out Loud shirt, Cubs Out Loud mug, Cubs Out Loud different logo shirts because i've got the one he did damon's got the three i don't know if Damon, gary's wearing one well he's got the uh, uh one of the smashy shirts mm-hmm. too he designed that shirt for us and we appreciate that very much so we also want to pimp him at his own personal one at tpublic.com slash user slash smashy the bear where he has other designs that he is selling if you would like, you can become a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Get the full audio podcast and access to the full video VOD of our shows. You can get all that by going to patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or if you want to just send us some cash, you can do so at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Amazon Audible, and you can find me anywhere in the internet. It's box set, box, puppy box, cut box, something or other. Or Windgem, W-Y-N-D-G-E-M on Twitch, which Bears and Dragons are returning this Thursday. I didn't Woo-hoo! think it's... You mean last Thursday? Not last Thursday. It just stared. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. 
<laughs> Damon? Um, if you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me as theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E, C-U-B-7-9 on most beer-related sites or on Facebook. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. Nice. <laughs> if you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as carebear73. Specifically, since we were talking about Twitter today, uh, my Twitter, the not safe for work one, is carebear73xxx. And with that... Say good night, everybody. Happy Halloween. Good night, everybody. Boo, happy Halloween. <laughs> Ciao for now.